In today's lesson, we're going to be talking about the lighting setup of this scene. This is going to be a full breakdown of not only the technical details, but most importantly, the lighting theory that went into making this scene. So let's jump in and see what it's all about. All right, let's talk lighting. So today we are going to go over the lighting breakdown of this shot right here. Um, I'm going to walk you through just kind of the thought process, kind of um, how everything's built, where the lights are put and why the lights are put. Um, and what's really cool is that on this scene, uh, this scene was used to create all these other scenes that you're seeing here in motion. So basically what I did is I took the same lighting setup that we're about to go over and I just applied it to other scenes and just started moving them around and move the camera around um, with slight alterations. So um, yeah, that's what we're going to do. We're going to go over it. Um, we're going to talk about uh, where the lights are placed, why lights are placed, just kind of some of the pitfalls I ran into um, and the challenges. So let's jump in and let's do it. All right, so the first thing with this scene always, always, always is find your composition. So um, without going into too much detail, what I did is I ended up landing on this composition, which I thought was kind of nice. It's kind of an uplifting angle um, of this synthesizer kind of coming into screen. Um, I have a pretty long lens on here. I don't even know what I'm using, 150. Um, I usually prefer longer lenses. I think they make things look nicer um, rather than wider lenses. Um, so yeah, so basically that's all that's happening here. I just have it tilted to a slight angle and you will see that the camera is just pointing like that. Okay, so that's the composition. Always get your composition first um, because when you're lighting, um, it's going to look different based on your composition. So if this moves, your lighting is going to move. Um, the next thing I did is um, I set up the textures. Now this is not going to be a texturing exercise, but just know that textures are so crucial to your lighting, right? Um, if something's shiny versus matte finished, it's gonna look totally different. So um, there are some challenges in this setup. If we bring back open the picture viewer here, uh, the main challenges are that we have things that are very reflective, they're flat. Anything that's flat is always a challenge to light. Um, and we also have two extremes. We have uh, extreme light to extreme dark. So we have white to black. Um, so there is that. So these these textures are definitely a challenge to work with and more a challenge to work with, um, but we got through them. So just know that the, the textures you have greatly affect your lighting, tremendously affect them and how you treat your lighting, okay? Okay, so now that we know the basics of the scene setup, um, let's talk about the lighting, which is the reason why we're all here, right? So um, looking at this image, um, I can give you a little background of kind of what I was thinking and the thought process of, uh, yeah, how I wanted this to feel. So I knew that I wanted a strong directional light that was coming from the top because I felt like this was kind of uplifting. It was kind of moving from bottom to top. And I wanted to feel like it was motivated by something, like it was moving towards the light. Uh, it was actually going towards that light. So you could think of this as the key light is actually the strong directional light that's coming from, to, from the top. So let's go ahead and let's make that key light. All right, so the first thing that we are going to do is, let me just get this back here. I'm gonna just go to grayscale mode here just so we can see our lighting. If you're not familiar, um, you can just hit this button here and it'll light everything in grayscale. And let's go to uh, Redshift Object Area Light. Okay, it's gonna be super bright, um, but that's okay for now. Let's go ahead and let's go to our area light and let's name this our key light. Okay, and I'm gonna click this little button here. I'm gonna say add target tag and null. And basically all this is gonna do is just help us uh, move a little bit quicker. So it's gonna add a target and a null. Uh, let's go ahead and center this, this key light target. So I just hit zero, it's a shortcut I have on mine. Um, so now it's just zeroed out at the coordinates. Okay, now if you remember, um, we want this light to be kind of up top and we want it to be kind of at the same angle as this is happening, right? As the light is actually positioned. Now you can tell this is incredibly large light and it's also incredibly bright. So let's fix that. First of all, let's go ahead and bring down the intensity quite a bit, maybe somewhere in here. All right, and if you don't know, um, also the size of your light affects the intensity. So let's go ahead and bring down the size of the light and let's have this be much, much smaller. So if we come over here, if we go to our key light, you'll see as we scale it down, 
the size of it is actually going to go down. So let's just bring it down, down, down. Because again, I want it to be something that is um, kind of concentrated. It should be like a little bit of a concentrated light. Let's do something like this maybe. And I kind of want it to be a little bit behind so it's a little dramatic, right? So what we're going for here is we're going for a little bit of um, fall off that's happening, right? We want our main light to be coming through here. Okay, next thing we can do is we can come over here to our attributes panel and let's go ahead and let's just bring down the spread. Now, if you're not familiar with spread, basically all it's gonna do is basically how tight um, kind of like your fall off is on the light. So like if I do this, it's gonna just be completely sharp. But if we go somewhere maybe in here or something, then it's, it's gonna be kind of soft, but also pinpointed. Um, I still think this light is a little big. So let's go ahead and keep bringing it down, down, down. And then let's also move our target to be somewhere in here. Cause what I'm trying to do is basically, I'm just trying to get it to hit this area right here. Okay. So we're just trying to get to hit this area. All right. And again, I'm going to try to get this as close as possible to the original within reason. All right. So you can see now what's happening is we're getting this kind of similar to what we had. We have this nice dramatic light that's happening. Um, and it's, um, yeah, it's creating some interest, right? It's creating some drama and some interest. Um, so we're going to say that this is good for now. Let's hit save. So we've got our key light and our key light is kind of directing our eye. Um, but now that I'm looking at this, I still don't like, I don't like how, how long these shadows were. If we go back to how it was, these shadows for me are personally too long. So let's just move it up just a little bit. And I'm also going to bring up the spread, I think just a little bit. So it's like this. And then perhaps we should even still. No, let's not do that. Let's just bring down the intensity. Let's go ahead and bring down the intensity just a bit. Something like that. We might go back and change it, but the point is that we want it to be just kind of kissing it. All right, we're gonna leave that there. We're gonna say that's our key light for now. We can always go back and adjust. Okay, so um, looking at this, so this is essentially what we were trying to create. Next, let's go ahead and let's adjust the temperature of this light because this temperature for me is a little warm and I actually wanted a cooler temperature. Um, so let's go and let's go and set this to color and temperature and I'll show you why in just a minute. And let's just, the more you move it to the right, basically the higher the temperature, the cooler. So let's put it like somewhere in here, maybe, I don't know, maybe a little, something like that, maybe. So now it's much cooler. All right. So we got that. So now it's, it's just cooler. Now, why did we do color? Because the next thing we're going to do is we are actually going to add a light texture and the light texture is going to help us quite a bit. All right, so what I have is I actually have this gradient light. And what this gradient light is gonna do, you see it's gonna give it extra fall off. So that's really nice. So that's that's nice because we have that extra fall off and it, it just creates, all it is is it's, it's just putting in this like gradient fall off that's being applied to this light. Um, so now that I'm seeing this, I see that we need to do two things. We need to make it a little bit brighter and maybe just a little bit bigger. Okay, I might even go a little bit wider on this, something like that. All right, and again, we're just kind of, you know, this is all something that is, it just takes time, this stuff, you know, you kind of just have to, it's all details. That's pretty much what it is. So I'm gonna say I'm happy with that. The point of this is that don't throw out the option of putting light textures on here. Cause if you'll see, if I take this off again, it's just like the fall off just isn't as nice. So all it's doing is it's looking at the black and white values and creating a fall off based on that. Cool. All right. So I would say that our key light for now is pretty good. So the next thing I want to do is I want to actually create a rim light. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause this really quick. Um, I'm just going to copy these two and I'm going to relabel them rim light. Okay, so we got these in here. Let's turn off the key light and now we essentially are gonna have the same thing. But what I'd like to do is I would like to actually bring this light kind of to the bottom. 
So let's go ahead and bring this to the bottom because I think it's important to actually um, carve this out, right? It shouldn't just be all black or just like one. I mean, it can be, but like for this situation, I actually don't want that. And I'm actually gonna switch off of my gray here so we can actually kind of see what's happening because this is where your reflections and your spec and everything kind of come in handy. And I probably should have had that on for the key light too, <laughs> but we'll go back and check it just to make sure. So the goal here is just to create some interest or to actually have a point of focus for the bottom, right? So we actually have just a little bit of stuff happening on the bottom. Because if we're thinking of this as a product render, we actually want to be able to, well, see the product. Okay, so I'm actually gonna crank this up a bit and then let's, let's put the temperature even lower because I feel like it's kind of nice to have something at the bottom like that. Um, our spread, maybe we'll just widen out just a tiny bit maybe. And again, the spread is going to be how like much fall off you have on your shadows. Okay. And then let's just make it smaller too. Let's make this a little bit smaller and that way it's not so intense. Okay. So now we've got something here and let's turn on our key light and just kind of see what we got. So we're starting to get some interest, right? So we have, we're get, catching a nice highlight here. We're getting nice highlights here. Um, it's starting to kind of shape up, okay? So we're starting to kind of paint a picture. All right, so looking at, you know, this versus where we are, okay? All right, so next, um, moving along, what I would do is I would actually um, create another rim light. And here's, here's my theory on this. So basically I want a rim light that would kind of carve out this section here and create just a tiny bit of interest. And again, I might, we might just go back and adjust this in a minute. Um, but I also want a light that's gonna kind of kiss this part down here. So I'm gonna create another rim light and this one's gonna be the left side. Okay, so that automatically did it. Let's turn off everything here and let's go to our top view. Let's go to our rim light. Oops, wrong one. Um, let's go to the actual light and let's move this light kind of like it's coming from from below, right? So it's like kind of just creating interest. And the other goal is to kind of kiss these keys here, right? So like we want to just kiss these keys so that it just creates a tiny bit of interest. Um, let's go ahead, oops, and let's make this perhaps just a little bit bigger. And we get some interest. Let's turn on our other rim light. You see our other rim lights helping paint this, and then we're also getting these nice details here. All right, let's turn back on our key. Oh yeah, it's starting to get pretty good. Um, now for this rim light, I actually don't want it quite as blue. I want a little bit more of a natural color. So that's pretty cool. All right, so um, we're starting to get somewhere. Um, so you're seeing that we're, again, we're starting to paint the picture, but it's still pretty dark, all right? And if we're thinking of this as a product, well, there's one thing, in my opinion, that's kind of a problem, and that is you can't see what the product is. So if you see over here, we actually have a logo here. So what I did is I actually created a second light that kind of helped this logo pop out. And I think we should probably take our key light maybe I think our key light should maybe just come over just a little bit so we also help this logo. But this logo needs more help. So let's just duplicate our key light and we're going to call this logo light. Okay. And now we're just going to we're just going to solo this and we know that we want this target to just be on this side panel. Okay. So let's just put that on the side panel. And I can't remember what I did here. Let's just see what it looks like. It's probably gonna be too bright. No, it's not too bad actually. So now you can see that just by adding this light, you know, we've kind of helped this out a bit, you know? Um, and perhaps, um, yeah, perhaps something like this. And then let's take the spread maybe even down a little further. That way, it, let's just solo this again. Okay, so I want this to be 
just like that. So now it's just kissing it. You can see it's just kissing that. Um, this is what I don't remember why I did, but let's just see what it looks like all together. All right, so if we put this all together, I think what I'm gonna do, because now this is kind of getting too hot, I'm gonna go to this logo light and I'm gonna have it only affect that side panel. So basically it's only gonna affect this side. Let's not exclude, let's put this to include. Okay, so now it's just affecting that side um, and it's starting to get somewhere. All right, so this is nice. You know, we're, we're starting to get something. Um, we're starting to get somewhere. Obviously our shadows are pretty dark here and we're missing a little bit of, you know, if I compare, we're, we're missing um, some of these. You can see how light these shadows are and we're also missing some reflections here. So let's talk next steps. So next that we have what I would consider our core setup. So we have a key light, logo light, and two rim lights. Um, the next thing that we need to consider is we need to consider a fill light. So let's go ahead and let's go ahead and create a, uh, a dome light. Okay, now dome light is gonna blow it way out. It's gonna be super bright, but that's fine. All right, so then let's go ahead and let's add an HDRI to this. Now I've already selected an HDRI um, that I felt like it works. Okay, so this is just an HDRI. I thought it had some nice um, highs and lows, um, but the one thing I don't like is that there's this brown in here. So how we fix that is let's go ahead and let's just change the color of this. So we can come to our color and I'm just gonna copy what I had before, but essentially what I'm doing is I'm just making it like kind of blue. Um, that way that, that kind of brownish tone isn't in there. Um, and then let's go ahead for this. And what I wanna do is I wanna create two separate um, dome lights. Now the first dome light is gonna be just for the lighting. So I wanna actually take off the reflection. That way we're only seeing, we're only seeing this, right? We're only seeing what's happening with this, okay? Um, it's just creating a fill. So this is the first thing I wanna do because if we start adding reflections, it might not be quite what we want. Um, so that's great. So let's just call this fill light. All right, but you're gonna see what happens here. A couple things happen. Um, first of all, um, we have created uh, something that is too bright in my opinion. So let's go ahead and first of all, let's turn off the background because this is, we want a dark environment in the background. But what I don't like is we used to have this nice fall off that was happening here into the darkness, but now we've lost that. So how do we how do we fix that? So let's go ahead and let's just block the light, right? So like if something's in the way, you just block it. So let's go um, and let's create a plane. I'm gonna turn this off while I'm doing this just so my computer doesn't get angry. And this is essentially gonna block the dome light that is happening on this side, right? Because we want this like nice fall off to happen. So what I have is I just have a pure black texture here, just pure black, nothing else. And we're gonna just apply that to this plane, okay? And let's see what how close we got. So it's not too bad. It's already kind of working. Um, and then you just kind of move it around to where it's like blocking as much as you want it to block. And you can see it just got in front of the camera. So let's go ahead and do a render tag, redshift object, and let's turn off the primary ray, ray visibility. So now this is really good because now we're still getting our fall off, but we are still getting the benefits of some of the fill light. Okay, so that's feeling pretty good to me. Um, so again, what we're doing is we're just we're just creating, you don't, I mean, sometimes you want it to be pure black and this is where comping comes in. If we, if we end up wanting to make this go pure black, we can do that in comp. Um, so now what we've done, we essentially, we add a fill light, right? Add the fill light and that adds just a little bit of fill, but then we want to just take a little bit away. So we're going to say that's pretty nice. Um, next, let's go and let's go ahead and create Let's go ahead and duplicate this. I'm gonna pause this. I always, whenever I'm duplicating lights or anything like that, I always turn, I try to always turn off my um, my preview because a lot of times it can get not happy. So let's go, and this is gonna be a reflection. So once again, I'm gonna turn off everything, everything, and let's just see what it looks like. It's gonna just be a fill light. But this time, again, I'm gonna turn this off. I'm gonna say zero to the, to everything but the reflections. So go to your details. So now this is only gonna be putting out reflections, so it's gonna be quite dark. 
okay? Now, I'm gonna cheat here. I've found uh, a position that I like for this and also intensity. So basically, let's go ahead and turn up the intensity to like around here. So now you see we're starting to get some extra reflections that are happening here and they're feeling kind of nice. We'll just do an even three. Um, and I'm gonna cheat with my uh, rotation values here. So I had six, 186, and 82. And again, this is one of those things where it just like takes time. <laughs> you just kind of have to like move it around and see how it feels. And you know, that's where kind of the art comes in. And the, also the pain in the ass part comes in. Um, all right, so the only other thing I did on this is I went to the project and I just excluded the side panel because um, if we go, if we see our coordinates, and I believe this was at 82, you see it's kind of hitting this pretty hard. So I'm just going to my uh, project, I'm just going to exclude this main case and let's exclude side right. Right, so now you see that if I just turn this down to this, this is what it's doing. It's just adding some nice reflections on these knobs, kind of down here, but it's not hitting it over the head, right? That's kind of the thing. You don't want to be too in your face. You want to, it's all just a balance, and that's really what makes it challenging. Um, and you'll see if we go to here, this is our lighting setup with gray. Again, you know, everything changes based on your textures and your colors, just everything's different. Um, yeah, so let's go ahead and start adding all the pieces back in. Let's add our fill light. You see what our fill light is doing there. So we're starting to get pretty close back to where we were. It's getting there. I mean, it's not going to be exactly the same, but you know, we're going to get as close as we can. Um, cool. All right. I'm trying to think what comes next. So next, we're pretty close, but the only thing that I'm seeing here that's quite different is these keys are pretty black. And right here, we kind of have this nice kind of blue that's happening, right? We have this nice blue that's happening on these keys. So let's go ahead and let's create a bounce card. So what I did here, we're gonna call this light blocker and then let's duplicate this and let's call this bounce card. Bounce, bounce, bounce. All right, so for the bounce card, what I did is basically I just created a ramp. It goes from dark to kind of the same tone that we have for our fill light. You can see, I think it's the exact same color. Um, and I'm just applying that to the bounce card, right? So let's just go ahead and replace this and then primary visibility is off. Okay, so let's, let's just turn this on and see what happens. I'm gonna turn off all the lights so you can see what happens here. All right, this one bounce card is producing all this light. All right, this is something I think a lot of people forget about is that bounce cards are awesome and can do a lot of work for you. Um, if you're smart about it. I mean, one bounce card can produce a lot of light. Um, but for this, I just want to use this for reflections. That's all I'm interested in. I'm just interested in using this for the reflections. So that's what we're going to do. So let's go up to our tag here and let's just turn off visible to GI. And now that's just going to enable us to just have the reflections for this, right? It's just going to create reflections. And that's really, because we've spent so much time on the lighting, that's really all I want to use this for. All right, so let's come over here. And this is where it just becomes kind of a push and pull, see what works well. I think that's pretty good. Um, we'll say that's good for now. So now you see this piece right here. It's kind of mimicking this. It's not going to be exact, but we're doing our best. All right, let's turn every piece on. So let's go ahead and turn our fill light on reflections key lights okay key lights the most important always our logo light which is going to carve this out just a bit so you say hey i recognize that rim light is going to be down here give it just a little bit of detail a little bit of highlights and then an additional rim light that's also just kind of kind of add some fill and some interest down here on the keys now is it exact? No. Is it close? Yes. And this is the basic setup of what I did to create this. Now, one thing that I also did that is um, not in here is pretty simple. I just have, um, if you ever want to create like a gradient background, you do a thousand different ways, but sometimes it's nice just to like parent it underneath the camera. And that way, wherever your camera moves, it'll move with it, right? This is just, a, again, it's like a gradient that goes to like a just kind of silvery kind of color. Um, 
and it looks like I probably worked a little bit more to kind of match the colors just a tiny bit better. But again, this is where comp can come through, right? Like you can, I, I, you can, um, for instance, this is still a little bright, but in comp, man, you can just bring this down if you want, if you render out all your paths separate, or you can just put like a, a simple uh, black object that's just taken back. Although I probably wouldn't recommend that, but if you're in a pinch. So that's pretty much it. And then from here, what I did is I took this scene and essentially I just kind of like, I moved the camera around um, and I just found different angles uh, as you can see here. And I just did the same animation. I turned the lights on and off. I moved them just a tiny bit so I had a little bit of interest. And then all of a sudden from one lighting setup, you're able to create multiple scenes. And then before you know it, you're done. Um, so that was the lighting setup for this. And again, I want to stress that textures are so important in this, right? Like if this were pure white, if this were pure black, et cetera, how reflective it is. That is something that I skipped in this lesson because um, it's a whole nother lesson, but I spent a lot of time trying to get the textures just right, um, which I don't show you the headache of that, but it is true. It does take time to get these things right and to play nice. So that is going to do it for today's lesson. Um, I hope this was helpful. I hope it gave you a little insight. I hope you learned something. And if you enjoy the lighting lessons, let me know and I will try to do more. All right, I'll see you on the next one.